Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of a Nuke for Beginners series. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at keying techniques in Nuke. Now the first note we're going to discuss is keyer. Now the way to bring this node into your node graph pane is by pressing either tab and type in keyer or you go to keyer and this node is available here as well. Now every time you have an image like that, that you get a distinct light and dark areas with not much color variation, then keying would be the right choice for you. So basically look at the contrast and the color distribution and think about if the node is suitable for you or not. Now, once you bring here and apply that to your node, you can see that if I double click on the node, we have a few attributes here. Well, the first one is input. Well, what goes into here is that RGB, RGBA, and what would be the output? RGB, RGBA would like to have th that effect into your alpha as well, then you will specify that. Then you have these handles, and actually there's, it's important to know what these handles do. Now we've got this handle, handle A, and that determines the low or transparent values in the key. So every time you plug this to an image, then chances are that would be the first handle for you to change because you are actually looking at removing a specific color or luminance through this handle. Now we also have handle B and that determines your high or opaque values. So opposite of A. Pixel values above that setting will be clipped to the color white. And of course we have um, C or D handles and these handles let you shift the center for the high values of the key. Now let's put those into practice. So if I bring B, plug it to the background and A to my foreground and select the merge and one, we can see instantly you are getting a really good result. Now, um, think about the operation as well, because you can um, use the um, operation based on your input image. So red, green, or blue channel. You can even have red screen, green screen, and blue screen, and luminance, which is the default value, the most useful one. Saturation, min and max values. So I know because I have a little bit of blue here, then probably, the blue keyer will work for me, but luminance also works for me as well. So if I bring that A handle from left to right to affect on the transparent values, you can see gradually but surely we're getting really good result. I can actually drop in a transform node here and actually move this guy to the position and then you can actually keyframe that accordingly. So I'm looking at the talent here and he's doing that gesture around this time frame. So I'm going to bring that guy, maybe scale that graphic up a little, something like that. I want this handle to be pushed by talent's hand. So around that, maybe I right click on the translate and set key, and then we move forward, and then I just move that to just maybe a little bit out of screen, like so, and that can be customized as well. You can actually um, scale down the Y axis and make the hologram disappear. That's a very easy and quick way to work with this um, keyer. Very effective, easy to use, and you can always select the keyer and change or try different modes. 
So you can see with green screen, we may not get any luck. Simply the color explains itself. With blue, because the, the transparent color is supposed to be blue, then we get almost an identical result. And I can just push back this A handle and get rid of all the blues. Sort of, you can see that we, we almost got rid of all the blues. And if you want to completely change the color of it, then you can easily bring in a color grade node and color grade it. As a matter of fact, let's have a look at it. The only difference is, and we did talk about this in our Roto video, you need to be mindful of pre-molt and on pre -mold. I've got the same scenario here. So if I plug this and bring this here, and you can see if I play so I can actually select this and um, scale this down just a tad move it here and I'm pretty much doing the same thing set a key move this here and move this hologram in the positive x axis and now if I play, you can see that will be pushed and it's all good. But the, the director may come and say, well, uh, I really like the movement. I just need this to be a different color. And you may say, all right, I'm just going to throw in a grade node. Happy days. And you go double click on this uh, grade node to change things. Let's say lift. But as soon as you change lift, you can see it's having an impact on the foreground and background, that additive mode that we talked about. So um, we talked about this again in our Roto video. It is important to accompany this by having a pre-mold, on pre -mold, followed by pre -mold. That's going to do the trick for us. Now, if you go ahead and change lift, it's going to only affect the foreground or basically pipe A. And as you can see, I completely removed the blue color. You can give it any color you want and uh, it works exactly the way it's intended. Now, that was a, a quick look at how to use Kier. Now let's have a look at Primat, which one of the is one of the strongest nodes for keying. Very simple to use, very effective at the same time. Primat has got a slightly different way of keying your footage. Primat keys are created incrementally by sampling pixels from a blue screen or green screen. So it works really well if you have blue screens or green screens. It's got two inputs, foreground and background. I tend not to plug background to the background just yet until I go through the first phase of tweaking. For now, I'm just going to plug this primat into my footage. Now, if I double click on it, I've got Again, the same questions. What do you have in your foreground and background, RGB or RGBA? Chances are you're using RGB. And then we've got initialize, which is primat and auto compute. That auto compute gives you a really good starting point right off the bat. And when you're using primat, be prepared to just press A and toggle back to RGB a lot because it's more efficient to look at the alpha channel constantly and see what type of artifacts you're getting. Things may look okay on surface when you look at RGB. As soon as you switch to alpha, you may see the noises. Now let's go and do auto compute. And right off the bat, you see that the result is great. Now here's the part when I said definitely check the alpha channel because as soon as I press A, you can see it's not quite clean. We're not quite there yet. And that's why we need to go back and go through actions and have a look at this um, one by one step 
You can actually completely disregard auto compute and start from step one, but smart selected background color with that color selection does almost what auto compute does. So I usually start from clean background noise to begin with. And again, this is just a personal a workflow. It's by no means the way to approach it. Now, again, you can switch back to RGB and work your way, but again, it's much easier to look at the alpha and then uh, take it from there. So as I said, it functions by sampling single pixels. So I'm going to hold down control, click to get rid of these areas. And I'm not too worried about these props. We are going to remove these props later through a, a garbage mat using Rotonode. So my main concern is the actual talent. So what I don't want to happen is to have artifacts around the talent. And then you can see that I'm introducing a little bit of um, artifacts within my mat. But not to worry, we'll address that very soon. So you can see, um, I can actually sample, click. You can always use that control shift trick that we talked about in bit depth video to sample larger areas and constantly go back and forth. Not too bad. You can see we have some areas that we need to work on. And that's why the next step is quite important. Clean foreground noise. Now that's the part that I again switch to alpha and hold down control and click to fix those areas. It's going to help me to kind of bring back some of the information that I lost during my noise reduction phase for the background. And you can see how effective and quick this method is. Again, I'm spending close to no time, but I'm sure you will spend enough time thoroughly and you go through the image to make sure there is no artifact. And uh, for the bottom, if you have uneven lighting like this one, chances are you use more than one primat or more than one keyer in general to target all the areas for now. I think this is not too bad. And again, we have other operations to go with. But again, to me, we call this a day. That's that's not too bad. And then all I need to do is to reformat the background and plug everything to the background and I'm getting the result. If I play, again, the overlay here can be removed by clicking on this guy and control click on the outside of the frame gets rid of the uh, overlay. But as you can see, um, with even the motion blur, um, I don't see much of a, a color spill early stages of production. This is obviously the first pass and um, it needs to be match moved the background. But all in all, after a garbage mat to get rid of the noise in the corners, the actual talent, the result is not too bad for three minutes worth of work. So that was a, a quick look at how Primat works and um, the power and ease of use of this um, note. Again, just like here, if you want to access this, you can find this in here, Primat, or you just press tab and type in Primat to bring the note in and plug it to your footage. Now, the last keyer that I would like to discuss is Keylight. Now, Keylight is also quite powerful. You know, it's an industry proven color difference keyer. And um, unlike Primat, it uses the screen color selector to choose the first sample from the source input, which is the green screen here. And that input is used as a blue green screen color base. And then we have drop down to change the tolerance, something that we didn't have in Primat. And that's the main difference. Instead of sampling colors from foreground and background, we have sliders to change the tolerance and ratio of each tool. So again, the, um, the way that you plug it is very similar to other keyers. Again, it can be found under keyer menu as well. And we have key light in here. Obviously, source goes to keyer. 
and I'm going to press one. If I double click on the key here, the initial screen color it and it asks for color sampling. You s hold down a control and click. And again, the initial result looks fantastic. I'm going to press a, we do have noise and it's expected. But again, you have a little bit of room to wiggle here using that screen matte rollout and we've got clip black and clip white to help us out with things. So far, they're both at the end of both extremes. Clip black is set to zero and clip white is set to one and we need to change those. So I'm gonna increase clip black and it increases clip for the black color and clip white makes sure that inside of the main talent there is no hole. We have other uh, tools to help us with that, for example, shadow gain and uh, mid-tone. So you can kind of use that shadow gain as a complementary tool to help out with clip black. And again, one thing you need to be mindful of, it's really easy to eat in to the talent. So always check, make sure there is not too many um, erosion going inside the mat. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. For example, you can see I just went too far on that. I'm kind of dialing this back. But all in all, it's extremely powerful. Now you may say, well, can we just uh, plug the background to background? We have the final result in the view. You can always plug the background to the background, but you still can't see until you switch to composite. It's better, of course, to have a reformat node just in case and plug the background to a reformat node. And with that, you get a good result. I have a, a slightly more complicated case in here, which I thought it would be nice to show you where you kind of combine everything. So as you can see, I have two key lights. One covers the upper portion of the screen, the other one, the bottom half of the screen. And they use a simple roto node. So this roto node is a garbage mat for me to remove all these um, extra tools. Now, where do they go in the key light? They actually go inside the out mat component. So every time you use this out mat pipe to roto out a portion, you need to make sure that plug this from none and choose alpha to roto it out. And I did the same thing. I used the exact same roto and plugged it into um, out M of both key lights. And then the way to combine key lights is through a key mix. And that's where I actually click on that key mix and one key light is focusing on this bit. The other key light is going to focus on the remaining of the areas. And all I did, I plugged the mask, uh, I plugged the roto to the mask pipe of the key light. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I used the hologram exactly the way that I showed you. Used keyer, transformed it over the key mix, and I applied a simple grade node and uh, got the result exactly the way that it's intended. So if I were to click and see the result, you can see I have a combination of everything. I have the key light. I have Keyer, I used Roto, I used Transform, I used Reformat, and you know, all in all, all we discussed so far, it's gonna help us to kind of put all we know together and to put that into practice and get a pleasing result. I'll let this one to buffer, and that's the type of result that we're getting. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video and, um, Talk to you guys soon.